Hi everyone. Today I'm going to share with you uh, an interface, a graphical interface that I created uh, using Super Collider, which is designed to work with and imitate um, the uh, the Nano Control, which is a nice lightweight USB MIDI controller manufactured by Korg. And um, so here it is. You can see there's um, nine sliders, nine knobs, um, 18 of these buttons, um, a transport and a, a scene selection. So you can actually select from one of four scenes. Um, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to do a live coding session here because it's actually a lot of code and um, it, it's a lot, it, a lot of it is just sort of you know mindlessly creating um, GUI objects and you know it's, it, so I'm, I am going to go through the code but only very very on a surface level. Um, I will however um, upload this code uh, put a put a download link in the video description. So uh, if you want, you can download it and mess around with it. If you happen to have uh, Korg Nano Control in your possession, so um, uh, here's the interface. Um, so it defaults to scene one, and so you can see um, uh, everything's in sync. We're we're up on scene one on the on the interface. So we're at the topmost. All the knobs are working. Um, these buttons as well. I have it set so the um, uh, in in the Korg Nano Control editor, I've set these bottom buttons to be toggles, but the uh, top buttons are only on. They're only in the on position when the button is physically depressed. And um, the reason I don't have uh, buttons on all four scenes, I only have them on the first scene, is because I was running out of continuous controller numbers. So I decided to make these buttons uh, behave globally. So um, let's let's go down to scene two. Um, so you can see now that um, scene two is active, um, but the uh, the buttons are still showing up on scene one, which doesn't mean that they're only active on scene one. It just means that um, they're active all the time and they're sending the same they're sending values on the same continuous controller numbers um, regardless of scene. Um, so another feature, uh, you can see we're, we're in scene two now, three, four, one, two. So the second set of uh, sliders and knobs is active. And if we take a look at slider one, it's somewhere in the middle of its range. And so you might expect that uh, when as, as soon as I move it, uh, this slider here will, will jump and will have discontinuous data. But I've built something in so that it won't actually update on the interface until the current value on the physical device matches the the value at that scene. So as soon as I dip it down there, um, then it becomes active and it follows the uh, the physical slider. So the same thing with you can see two is somewhere in its range. And of course this is this is left over from from what we did in scene one, so it remembers those values. So all I have to do is bring it down to zero because we're in scene two, and then that slider is active. And um, so now, now the physical sli slider two on on the Korg is down at the bottom, and so if we switch back to scene one, um, moving it down here won't do anything because the value in the interface in scene one is 64. So I've got to move it up, and as you watch on the on the left here, it picks it up. So now it's found 64. It says, "Okay, I matched the previous value," and so now I'll update. Um, so that's that's really it. The, there are actually no um, no actions associated with um, the receipt of continuous controller data, but it's pretty easy to to put that in there. And I can show you an example really quick. Um, so uh, let's go down to our knobs, for example. Go to knob one, and all we really need to do is add an action function and let's just do something simple. And we'll just post the value of the knob uh, to the post window. So when we're on scene one, this right here is, is knob one on scene one. And uh, let's bring up the post window. And now you can see that when we move this knob, an action is performed. And in this case, the action is just uh, posting the value 
But you know, it really you can you can use this interface with whatever kind you can have this you know uh, trigger audio or you know you know control an audio signal whatever you like. Um, so that's that's the gist of of putting in actions. Um, oh, okay. So I'll, I'll I'll really quickly go over the um, the code here. Um, so at the top, I create a uh, window, a window and two user views because I have some some custom things that I'm doing. These are the two arrays, which uh, which ensure that we don't get discontinuous data. That ensures that the sliders and knobs don't jump to positions. It keeps track of the values at each scene, and uh, that's what this first array does. The the actual values of the uh, continuous controllers are stored here and this array only has zeros and ones and a zero indicates that that particular knob or slider uh, does not match the previous value at that scene when you last left it and a one indicates that it has matched which which means it will it will update this array you know but a zero means don't update the array because the values don't match um, and then we have a lot of uh, GUI objects we have static text these titles uh, background patterns, um, here are the transport buttons, a lot of pen commands, and here, here are the actual knobs, knob 1, knob 2, all the way down to knob 36, um, and then 36 sliders as well, the buttons, really, it's, it's a lot of stuff, but um, it's all there. Um, these static texts um, display the actual numerical values of the continuous controllers, so those get updated as well. And um, and then for easy um, access, I dump the uh, the GUI text as well as the sliders and knobs into uh, their own array for quick lookup. Um, and then the the meat and potatoes here is the um, the CC responder, all this stuff and. Um, uh, does a little bit of math here with uh, variables row and column. It takes the continuous controller number and manipulates it so it knows uh, based on the continuous controller number which um, which element in the array it should be updating. And so there are eight sliders. I'm oh, sorry, nine sliders and nine knobs. Um, and there are four scenes. So um, nine times eight is seventy-two. So we've got seventy-two total. And if it's within this range, then we know we're dealing with a, a knob or a slider. And this code is evaluated. And what, basically what this is saying is um, if, if the value has been matched, right? if, if the, um, the current uh, physical device matches the previous value uh, on, on the interfaces seen, then update, update the uh, value lookup with, with the current value. And you know, so as you move the knob or slider, uh, you're going to continue to update that, and also here is where we actually um, update the um, the numerical display GUI text array, you know, the value as a string, so update it that way, and actually perform the action associated with that knob or slider. Um, and and this this code here is evaluated if if um, the uh, the current value doesn't match the previous value. And it will just keep checking to see if the value is within three on either side. So there's a little bit of tolerance here. But as soon as it's in this, this range, then it says, oh, okay, the value has been matched. So value matched at the row and column equals one, which means that uh, this code will start being um, evaluated. And then I have a case statement for the um, hold buttons and toggle buttons and the transport. And um, then I have a, a I have to define a system exclusive function uh, because the uh, the scene button uh, sends system exclusive messages, uh, and these just coordinate the um, the uh, the interfaces LED, you know the the scene the scene lights, so you can tell what scene you're on, and that's it. That's the rest of the code. Um, so again, you know, here you go, Torg Nano. And um, lots of fun. So lots of possibilities here. Uh, okay, like I said, I'll, I'll put um, I'll put a link to this code in the video description, so uh, you can download it and look at it and mess around with it yourself. Um, okay, I guess that's about it.
Thanks for watching.